I've roasted turkeys in so many different ways over the years. I've dry brined, I've wet brined, I've shoved butter under the skin, I've shoved herbs up the skin, I've deep fried. I played around with oven temperatures, starting low, then going to high, starting high, going to low. And honestly, for the past probably five years or so, I have been roasting my turkey the exact same way. My turkeys always turn out really juicy, super flavorful, People always love them. So this is my no more messing around turkey method. Before I get to roasting, I first have to kind of get this thing out of the bag that it comes in. So I like to just really give a good clean to the whole sink and sink area. And then I just put the whole thing into the sink and cut the bag open and kind of let all the juices drain away. There's always so much juice in that bag and it's just, really messy to do it any other way. It's controversial whether or not we should be rinsing poultry with cold water before we cook it. It used to be the way to go back in the day, but health and safety now says that if you wash it, you're kind of like splashing juices all over the place. And then you could be inadvertently causing cross-contamination that way. I do like to rinse just to freshen things up a little bit, but I'm just really careful when I do to have like really low water pressure, really not be splashing anything around. And then once I'm done, I give the sink a big old clean down again with lots of soap, scrub. Sometimes I use uh, like a cleaning product as well. Oh, and I remembered afterwards that I should have taken my watch off before doing this, but luckily these watches are waterproof. So I just gave it a good wash afterwards. Once that's done, I just stick it in whatever pan I'm gonna roast it in and then I dry it off really, really well. This part, I don't know how to do it any other way other than with paper towel. So I just use a good amount of paper towel and I make sure to get like under the wings and inside the cavity and all over the place and make sure it's really dry. Next, I like to season it really well with salt and pepper. So I'm using a bit of avocado oil here, but you could use any oil or butter. It's, it's main purpose is really just to give the salt and pepper something to cling to. The most important fat when you're roasting a turkey is the turkey fat itself. And you get a lot of that with a turkey. So I'm not, I'm not trying to add like fancy olive oil or fancy butter or anything here. Just a little spritz of whatever oil, salt, pepper. A little trick I like to do is to pre-mix the salt and pepper so that you only have to do the whole thing once instead of going around with the pepper grinder. That's a little pro kitchen tip. I always like to have some aromatics involved in the roasting process. Usually that's just like a bunch of fresh herbs, whatever I have. Today I had rosemary and some onions and some celery. So I put the herbs inside. I had some bay leaves too. And I shoved a couple onions inside. And I also had some celery and some onions that I just scattered around underneath the turkey on the roasting pan. And this kind of helps elevate the turkey so it's not in direct contact with the roasting pan. You can definitely use a rack as well. I just don't happen to have one. It's also the rack that you use in your turkey roasting pan is kind of a bitch to clean at the end of the day. Just saying. I don't trust my chickens or my turkeys. Sometimes there's a little fat flap on a turkey that you can kind of like cut a little hole in and poke the legs through. If that flap isn't there, I just leave the legs to flap around, I don't really care. I like crispy and well-cooked dark meat anyway, so I'm not really too worried about it. The only real tricky thing I do with this turkey is I roast it for the first half of the cooking process upside down. So I start it breast side down because the whole back of the turkey is dark meat and a lot of fat, whereas the breast side, obviously the breast dries out the fastest. So I like to keep the breast protected for quite a long time which means that all of the fats and juices from the dark meat can spend some time kind of like dripping down through the turkey and kind of helping out that breast meat. It's a little bit like self basting. My oven is at 350 degrees and I have it on convection. If you don't have convection, you might want to crank it to 375 depending on the heat of your oven. I generally go by the 15 minutes per pound rule as a guide. This turkey is about 14 pounds, so it's gonna be in for three and a half hours. Halfway through the cooking process, I take it out and I find the easiest way to flip it over is with two sets of tongs, because you can just kind of get into both of those cavities and kind of 
hoisted over. This has been challenging for me over the years, but I've gotten pretty good at it now. <laughs> it looks really pale. The breast side looks like not great, but that second half of the cooking process is going to brown the skin really, really nicely. When it's starting to smell good and it's starting to look kind of close to done, I start to take the temperature. And I love my instant read thermometer from Thermoworks. And actually I have an affiliate link for these thermometers. They're the best. They're not super cheap, but honestly, I use this thermometer for so many things. It's so reliable, it's so fast, and I really like that it's thin, so it doesn't leave a giant hole in whatever you're taking the temperature of. Once this was done, I just put it off to the side to rest. I didn't even put a tinfoil tent over it because I don't really think that that does very much. <laughs> the turkey's gonna stay warm. It's fine, there's a lot of heat in there. I like to rest my turkeys for a good hour if possible. I kind of cut it short today, so this has probably been resting for about half an hour. But look how good it looks. I guess all that's left to do is carve it. I like to have a cutting board that has a little divot in it because there are gonna be some juices. I'm gonna try and be as swift as possible, but I don't know. Carving a turkey on camera feels a bit daunting. <laughs> And there are actually only two of us for dinner tonight. So I'm not gonna carve the whole thing. Although at some point tonight, I will carve it all off because I'm gonna want to get some stock cooking tonight if possible. That's always the goal. Good to have a tea towel handy because it can be a bit of a messy process. And maybe I'll take my watch off this time. How's that sound? Okay, so I like to start with the wings and the legs. So I'm gonna flip it over. I like to kind of just find the joint here and try and kind of work around it. So with meat carving, and I might just mention that I won a, a scholarship in cooking school for meat carving. <laughs> um, with meat carving, it's all about cutting a little and wiggling a little, you know? And that's kind of the name of the game. So that's the entire wing. I'm just gonna take that off like that. Actually, I could split it, that might be nice. So it's like, pull it, find the joint, wiggle it, we still good, yep. There we go. So that's the wings off. Mmm. This is gonna be so good. All right, so for the leg, I'm just gonna try and get into the joint again. So see how it's like really quite easy? Once you find that joint, kind of just follow it along and the whole thing just falls right off. Check it out. And that's because this turkey is very well cooked. You can tell by how easily the joints are kind of falling apart and how loose everything is. So I'll just separate the thigh and the drumstick here, find that bone, and just cut through. I just have to sample. Mmm, mmm. Okay, might as well just do the other leg. It's like, it kind of really tells you where it wants to fall apart, you know? Separate that thigh from the drumstick. This would be what I give to my dad. <laughs> he loves that. He loves just a whole drumstick. And if you want to go the extra mile, you can take the meat off the bones. I mean, I think I like serving the drumsticks whole, but the thighs, I would probably just pull the meat off the bones a little bit. And then before I do the breast, I'm just gonna show you where the oyster is. So the oyster is right kind of behind the legs here. There's this really juicy, succulent piece of meat. It's kind of in this little like hip divot. And that is the best part of the turkey. Maybe this will be my cook's treat. Mmm. Mmm so, so tender. Mm. Mm. 
Mm. Okay, I'm gonna flip this over now and do, show you how I like to cut the breast. So I don't carve the breast on the turkey. I like to take the entire thing off. So I just find the breastbone here in the middle, follow it along. I feel like this is the time to have a film crew getting all the right angles. So take the whole thing, or at least, you know, most of it off the best you can. And now it's getting really hot in the middle, so it's harder to handle. That's another benefit of letting it cool for longer is it's much easier to carve because you can actually handle it. So now I have the entire breast. I'll just get this out of the way to show you. Got this entire breast and I want everybody who's eating it to get a little bit of skin. And also the part of the breast that was most exposed to the heat is of course the outside. So as you kind of get deeper into the breast, it's less and less dry because it's been exposed to less direct heat. So a really good way to cut it is to just cut across. So that way everyone gets a little bit of skin. Everyone gets all the best parts of the meat, the juiciest part, and then the part that was closest to the heat. And it's just kind of fair for everyone, you know? And this way you can control your th slices as well. If you want to do thicker ones or thinner ones, I kind of like to do like kind of steaky thick ones. Cause why not? That's what we're talking about. Nice thick steaky turkey slices. And then if you're really fancy, you can kind of just lift the whole thing up with the knife and just lay it all on there. Oopsie. And then once all the kind of main bits are carved off, I'll just go at it with my fingers. After dinner, my mom and I will chat and hang out in the kitchen and sip on some wine and pick some turkey meat off the bone. And then the bones will go right away into a pot or instant pot or whatever to start the stock because it's really nice to get that step out of the way. And that's it. That is how I roast my turkey nine times out of 10. And it comes out so juicy, nice and brown, really flavorful, tastes like turkey. It doesn't really taste like other stuff. A few nice aromatics, but nothing major. So I hope you found this helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. I'd love to hear about your favorite turkey roasting methods. I mean, there are so many good ones. If there was one extra step that I would include in this turkey, it would probably be to dry brine it because I do love how juicy your meat is when you dry brine it. Thanks for roasting a turkey with me today and I'll see you next week.